What am I looking at here? Point gap. Let's do this real quick. I'm going to delete this. I, uh, let's see. No, this fucking screen sharing things in the fucking way. Hey, can I minimize that? That's crazy. Let's see. Yes, there we go. I'm sure going to do this. I just started playing with it when I got home from lunch. My sister-in-law was like, hey, your weed whacker uh, needs more string. Can you bring some over? And I was like, I just got back from Seattle. I'm not driving over to your house to bring you fucking string for my weed whacker you're borrowing. But, uh, so let's see. Now this is in the way. I know you can't see what's in the way, but. Uh, yeah, I, you can minimize your um, thumbnail video. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, I'm looking for your process. Oh, my God, dude, there's so many freaking options. Two millimeters of storefront, so high reflectivity. And I just started playing with shading. I don't know how that's going to turn out on this one, but I want. Let's do That's going to take a second. For some reason, when I exported the E57, of the, and this is just the job we did uh, the other day, but uh, it did all of the... Um, Point clouds. So I says 404 point clouds. Uh, so it did all of them for that athletics job. Oh, I gotcha. But I feel I like there's, I, can't I there's that we, many scans of that place. No, I think we did 70 the first time and 39 the second time. So I don't know why. I don't know. Let's, I'll, that'll have to be a question I ask him if I talk to him. And that was all sent out, right? And delivered? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's all been delivered. And I know what their detailers want now. So like, uh, the E57, LGS, the images, and everything else I, I could think of was all in one package. See, it looked way better last time I did it. Hold on. I may have fucked this up because I was trying to do it. Delete. So I'm just going to go easy peasy with it. I do like, so when you first open it up, it gives you uh, three views. It gives you the front, the side, and like the top down. All plan views, right? So, I mean, at bare minimum, it looks like they uh, at least design something with their fucking customer's viewpoint in mind, right? Like, cause it's meant for the AEC industry. So that, and then drop the... So this is the north side? This would be the same side. West. It would be the west side, right? Towards the water. It'd be the storefront of that, that lobby reflectivity. And then let's go play. Just gonna zoom through it again real quick. Uh, yeah, I've just started playing with it uh in my spare time but go figure as soon as i try and learn a new software all of a sudden we start getting busy right yeah excellent yeah. hey mac oh hey leo hey hey gabe Sorry, no, buddy. Was, hey yeah what is that a that's the point cap that you're showing yeah us? just while we're waiting for everybody mm -hmm. we're gonna open her up in a second a second there it goes come on home. here we go and then let's do this vectorizer and what? That's too much. Ah, I'm trying to do it on my knee. Let's see. There we go. Hey, let's Jack. Play. Hey, Gabe. I just saw your invite. Excellent. I'm glad you did. And let's see. Finalize. Let's see how this works out. Look at that. I mean, there's some extras you got to add in there, but that's cool. Wow. And you can do that. Like you can do a cut laterally and do the whole floor plan that way, right? With these, imagine these are walls instead of uh, window frames. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot faster than what you can do in, say, 3DR. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the scan to plan. So that's good. Yeah. So real quick, let me introduce Jack Hatchery. I talked to you guys a couple times about uh, uh, the young man with the University of Washington uh, doing the uh, wearable LIDAR. And, yeah. And uh, how he'd reached out a couple different times for some uh, just opinions on things and what we'd be able to use it for. I thought this uh, meeting would be a good good place for him to kind of talk about what he was doing, you know, switch it up a little bit for us. Yeah. The JTM connection, right? Like yeah. I actually gave him my number and he reached yeah. out and we've talked a couple of times. But, uh, uh, basically what he, and again, you're going to have to elaborate more on this, Jack, but uh, wearable LiDAR technology, I think they're a little early on that specifically, but that's kind of where they're headed. And then for progress tracking, um, keeping updates on, on where all the, uh, uh, you know, things on, on site are, and just kind of, you know, capturing existing site conditions in real time. It's pretty interesting. So, uh, Jack, I don't know if you feel like talking about that, but kind of give us a, a brief rundown of what, what you're doing and how your startup's going. And I hate to put you on the spot, you know, first thing, but. Um, no, this is good. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah. I'll also talk to Leo a little bit, so it's good to see you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hey, Gabe, you sent him the invite before I tried to. <laughs> oh yeah okay i gave him a heads up that i was going to be doing that so um cool cool you know 
anyways, I think it's a pretty interesting uh, opportunity and, and kind of a good segue into where we could potentially be headed in the industry, right? So it's an interesting idea and you know, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, there's a lot of work that needs to be done first, but there's no like base principle prohibiting the technology. So it's been really helpful to speak to different AEC professionals to hear all about how reality capture is done currently on job sites. For a little bit of context, um, I studied architecture in undergrad. I went on to use LiDAR scanners on site for a little bit, also developed some BIM automation stuff and did some architecture robotics stuff. All of that led to me studying robotics here at the University of Washington, uh, where I learned all about how robots see the world and how they get very similar point clouds and um, other 3D uh, imagery data um, from different cameras and sensor suites and started thinking about how those could be mounted onto a hard hat, kind of similar to how OpenSpace or Cupix is using like a large 3D camera um, on a single hard hat of the job site. And then from there, be able to do all, all sorts of um, interesting AI analysis for progress, um, object detection and finding and management and things like that. So uh, currently we're very early stage pre-funding, just developing the technology so that we can get something out on site and then be able to take that to investors and say, and to show them all the merits of it and uh, be able to raise enough money to to do it well and for real. Um, so the it, until then, or as we develop the technology, it's been extremely helpful having conversations with Leo and Gabe and um, James out of JTM and other construction contacts just to hear all about how reality capture is currently used, what the main benefits might be, what pain points it's addressing, how something like this could be used and what advantages it has over existing solutions. Um, some of the stretch goals for it might be things like accuracy checking or with other real-time systems like robotics on site, but there's a long ways to go until then. And the accuracy will probably never match what you can get out of a stationary laser system, but as long as it can get good enough, I believe it can be useful. Nice. Are you working with uh, Mike Grill yet and those guys up there at UW? Um, I am not. Who is this? Uh, they're the Rapid team, but they're based out of UW there. They travel around doing laser scanning on natural disasters, but they have uh, an entire room full of laser scanners and uh, boats, and they're right there. They're part of UW. So uh, mm -hmm. they they might even teach there. I'm not quite sure, but they're... They work with the OSU Geomatics program too, and they have a ton of laser scanners too. So there's, uh, I would reach out to them if I were you and uh, they would, plus they're also uh, some of the smartest people I know. So uh, they'll, they'll definitely help you out, I'm sure. Awesome, could you say the name again? Michael Grilliot, G-R-I-L-L-I-O-T. I'll, uh, I'll send their contact info to Gabe, we can send it to you. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead, Gabe. Well, I was thinking about Eli Jensen, who's in here, the forestry guy, you know, and the stuff that he's doing. And it seems to me like uh, a wearable LIDAR um, sensor in the forest um, could be uh, advantageous as well. It definitely I could mean, be. It's a, a, a way different application than what you're, at least what we've talked about. But uh, And and again, I, I can't speak on it very well, but basically he's virtually thinning wooded areas to assist with fire prevention, right? So fire management via LIDAR. And he's done some pretty interesting things that we've seen already. And so anyway, uh, your application seems like it has potential for something like that. You know, I don't know if they're flying aerially or uh, walking it with slam scanners, but they are, uh, they're walking it with slam scanners. Uh, with the geo slam, how, how is your trajectory calculated? Uh, so we'll be using visual visual slam, and uh, I'm assuming with the IMU then too, or just visual. I'm currently evaluating the mix, yeah. Okay. Um, so pretty heavily reliant on a multitude of different geometry then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the the problem he's running into with forest is especially in like uh, northern Arizona forest is they're all ponderosa pines. So it's like having a, a, a thousand of the same column around you. Uh, there's some rocks and other stuff. I mean, it, he would love to try it out, I'm sure. But I, just something that would, I foresee, being a potential issue with it. 
you're, you're uh, at the visual slam, you're definitely more square geometry. Your scanner probably likes walls and ceilings and floors and stuff. Yeah, but not definitely not like a, a blank wall. Still need something to pick up on. Yeah, a little bit of contrast. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely the way the whole market's going. So that's cool. Do you have uh, any data you can show? Not on this computer, sorry. No, it's okay. So, uh, when you, and I'm sure you've run into this already, but I know Gabe, you know, when you, when you show up somewhere, make sure you have data because that's, we all, we're all data whores, right? Oh, same. Yeah. For sure. It, it is the truth. And, and you know, like I, I, I say, I know you're still, you know, in your startup phase and I think you told me you were using, currently using photogrammetry, right? Uh, so to do some preliminary like 3D reconstruction, um, Yes, like photogrammetry or, uh, or like voxel reconstruction from stereo cameras was kind of what we were playing around with, just using like um, a lot of open source systems just to get the lay of the land. Hmm. I wish I could say I knew more about it, but I really don't. Um, is Eric in here um, still? Eric is in here. Eric, yeah, do you know what I'm he's talking here. about? Did you understand that? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Eric's a pro so Eric is a programmer. He used to work for Leica. He'd definitely be a good source for you. He'll. Uh... Oh, I, I was I was a programmer about a million years ago. So question. PPD. Oh, how'd that how'd that go? <laughs> no. 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 They wanted uh, more of like an MBA type, which I am not. So womp. <laughs> well, from what Gabe says, you sounds like you're more NBA than MBA. I hear you're quite uh, I mean, I've heard that a few times, you know, he was, uh, he was telling me I should, uh, maybe pick your brain a little bit at some point. So, you know, might need to chat at some point. I, I'm kind of exploring other, uh, possible trajectories too. So for instance, sales, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, I, I was a product manager back to Jack's question. Uh, uh, I've been doing reality capture stuff. I, I, was in a startup back in the day doing targetless registration and and all sorts of um you know we were doing some computer vision stuff for you know as a contractor for some of the early um self-driving startups and and or well not even startups some big automotive companies but uh yeah so i was i was tied in with uh with a bunch of guys from cmu robot yeah, legit <laughs> learning a lot about product management these days as we like we're, we've just started to really define our first PRD and yeah. kick off like the real development. So we'd love to have a, a more one-on-one -on -one discussion if you're available. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't mind, uh, you know, contributing whatever I can. Sure. Awesome. Well, since we've introduced everybody else, Karina down there is a geomatics instructor for uh, Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. I think that's right. And so she's been teaching uh, geomatics and laser scannings forever and ever. So, don't make me sound old. Oh, you know, <laughs> we're all old, Raina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all old, except for Jack. Comparatively speaking, you know, um, <laughs> you're probably yes, the man. second youngest person in here, for whatever that's worth. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know for my maybe my CV makes me seem really old though. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, I do. I teach at SAIT um, in Calgary, and that's pretty much yeah. Gabe introduced me. I'm also a co-founder of the Can Slam circuit, which is where we're testing different Slam technologies um, based on setup control networks and then we use a terrestrial scanner to look at the point clouds and we compare the point clouds so with the hand held thing i was like "Ooh, yeah so and literally it's actually not a competition it's just that we evaluate it based on like primary control secondary control price points and stuff like that and then we just create a map out of that and a visual display and then it's like here's a report on what we find and we provide it for free for anybody to look at and download and and, and so forth so it's a great testing ground if you're looking for a place to go. Okay. Uh, maybe yeah. if you have the prototype ready by November, borrow it and bring it up to your, your run since we're coming up. That would be, and Jack, could you even come too? Absolutely. Yeah, that, that would be amazing. We're currently considering like how we're going to test our system like uh, as thoroughly and we're in need of a ground truth system. So we should at least talk for sure. Definitely. Yeah. I, I would be happy to. We, we have a really, 
We have the interior circuit ready to go. So it sounds like that would be the one that you would need. We're still working on the exterior, but um, yeah. it's about a 200 meter run to go. And then oh. we try to break it with like windows and stuff like that throughout. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how far that is in my brain, you know, 600 mm -hmm. feet ish, seven. Yeah, about three <laughs> times three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's when we get to the meters and miles. But yeah, we we also have well, we do an exterior circuit, which is about 2.1 kilometers, and, and we oh, just here we go again. Yep. More math tests. I know, right? You're supposed to be bilingual by now. <laughs> well, right, but. Bilingual. <laughs> that man can throw out some Spanish, that's for sure. See, si, the problem is you live in uh, South America, you know? the, other, the other borders where I grew up, you know? Every once in a while, Gabe will call me and you can hear a mariachi band in the background. Uh, it's just at home. That's, that's the stuff you're listening to at the house here. Robert, how are you? I don't know if you've been in any of these yet, but... Um... No, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is relatively new for me. This is... Oh, I didn't even see you come in. How's it going? It, 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 it's it's new and old. I mean, there's familiar faces in the room. Hi, Karina. Hey, Matt. Hello. Uh, but also, yeah, it's a new lounge space for me. So uh, I met Mac. Well, you know Mac online, you know, his lateralic presence. And we got oh, yeah. to meet and greet at the Oregon State University Conference last week. And I think we couldn't stop talking. So... Yeah, you can't yeah. stop talking is a trick in and of itself. So, and Karina, I owe you an email. I hope I gave you an email to say I'm getting caught up on my backlog. Yes, but but absolutely, uh, you know, BCIT. You know, just for those of you here in the room, I'll introduce myself quickly. My name's Sean Galway. I am kind of point cloud enabled, going back to the late '90s. I started in marine hydrography, sonar. So I'm a multi-beam swath expert and originally from a small group in New Brunswick called the Ocean Mapping Group. I jokingly say to all my class every year, I evolved out of water onto land to see if they're scientists or non-believers. Uh, you know, so I moved out of the marine uh, bathy work into airborne LIDAR uh, and, and mainly corridor fixed wing became a sort of fixed wing and uh uh, helicopter-based systems integrator, the, one of the last companies I worked for, um, you know, we designed and built our own payloads. And I was, in essence, the boresight calibrator for at 1.7 different systems. Uh, and then LiDAR companies in BC go up and down like junior mining stock. And I found myself pink slip for the third time. Either the companies went bankrupt because of me, I don't know, or... Uh, and I had nowhere else uh, at one point uh, and BCIT was looking for a hydrographic instructor and they got two for one. So they got a hydro instructor. BCIT is a polytechnical school in Western Canada and Vancouver. And, you know, so I've been around point clouds for 30 years. So, uh, you know, LIDAR, TLS, uh, drone pilot, you know, you know, so there's not a piece of software I don't know. I'm not going to say I know any of them well anymore. There's just too many. We just want to know the best one. We don't care about how many you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. I don't get much play time anymore. I'm not industry anymore. I'm in a classroom. So unlike, I know Karina seems quite active in the research space as well. BCIT does not have a research arm or capacity. We're, we're you know, foundation, front level knowledge. We're a little bit myopic right now in terms of our survey geomatics program is focused on provincial land surveying and not geomatica at large. I think that is, you know, what a lot of programs are suffering from across North America. You know, and this is just that space, you know, it'll lounge. I'm hosting a conference next year. Uh, you know, so... I, I like to stay in the game. Let's put it that way. I don't do the work anymore, but, you know, it's evolving so fast, folks, that, you know, you need a community in a village to help keep up. Yeah, that's yeah. For sure. Did you get me slotted in for that conference next year already? As many, you know, there's at least three people in the room that I think should already be signing up. My my event planning coordination team at BCIT is non-existent, so it's all me. I'm basically still running around trying to recruit support staff to help. And every time I send an email for support staff, it goes up, it bounces around. And three weeks later, it comes back down and I'm the support staff. Oh. But yeah, we're, we're making progress, Mac. Uh, you know, we, we saw a venue, uh, you know, we're, there's a couple of us, you know, we're, we're aiming for 100 people. 
you know, so, you know, very similar to Oregon State's conference, just without the, uh, you know, the American society behind helping organize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For those that don't know, uh, SAGES is the Surveying Engineers Geomatic Educators Society. Surveying, yeah. Ge Surveying Geomatics Educators Society. It's, yeah. it's, it's a North American group that's been around off and on for 30 plus years, going back to like the late early 90s it used to be cross-border you know a lot of geodesists a lot of gnss from unb in calgary and canada you know all of the main schools in the u.s the model is different where a lot of surveying and geomatics programs are nested under civil engineering schools but you know or oregon state and state the ohio state gotta make sure i put that in there you know all of the big players are involved you know and uh the, it's not the schools it's the people that make that community it's very similar to this it's it's not it's not a as much as max said you know, he felt overwhelmed by all of the eggheads there most of the people really actually are believe in sages from it's a personal networking group that is you know founded in education you know our common denominator is survey education uh, so you know i think sate was represented for the first time last year in a long time, simply because it was the conference was held every two years. It was held at University of Calgary last year, which, you know, allowed for Nate and Sate to, through proximity, hear about it more. Yeah, and we had money to go because we didn't have to travel. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So absolutely, Mac, as many that want, you know, I'm going to get the website up in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, I've got the email list and who knows how that will happen. Yeah. The we'll more the merrier, so to speak. And it doesn't have to be formal education. You know, I think formal or not formal, but I mean, you know, post-secondary education is only one arm of it. You know, there's industry education, you know, domain education, you know, specialty groups like this that are also doing, you know, outreach education. And I mean, I can't knowledge share on some of the stuff I see you guys posting anymore. Technology is just evolving too fast. Yeah, I mean, we got... The, the tip of the spear right here with Jack. I mean, this technology is not even on the market yet. No. I won't ask, I won't ask any IP yet, Jack, but I can see, I, I can see a bunch of, you know, chronic boxes back there over your right shoulder that suggest you got pinouts and you probably got a soldering kit there and who knows what you're making. Yeah, oh, did you, did you come in late? Did you not hear his product? No, no, I, I, did, I only signed in about five minutes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I switched to uh, speaker view, so I can't track everybody that's in the room now. So sorry. I didn't see you come in. Yeah. He's uh, developing a handheld slam scanner. Oh. Wearable. Oh. Thank you. So, Jack, you should probably elaborate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. So we're thinking about a new form factor for helmet mounted slam scanning that could be lower profile than um, some of the existing ones like Cubix or open space and if it's lower profile, then it could be worn continuously or collaboratively so that you could start taking scanning data or just imagery initially from multiple perspectives uh, across a longer time span than what's currently possible. Has anybody thought about whether or not there's, you know, with the police body cameras, whether the sort of video and frame grabs that are already on police body cams and so on actually lend a space to 3D model. They might with Gaussian splats, but you'd have to trust them to leave them on, which they don't usually. But well, that's what I think you're yeah. talking about in terms of Jack, lower profile. You know, as technology miniaturizes, you don't know. I mean, watching somebody walk around with the EXO or nav is, you know, that looks like they've got a, a you know, a help. What, what's that called? The halo? Yeah. You know, when you break your neck, it... it it looks like they've been tracked. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a giant exoskeleton. The police body cameras are an interesting option. I mean, just the off-the-shelf ones are pretty limited in like how you can use the data and what other types of sensors you can integrate with it. Uh, it's the same general idea of just having something passively taking data um, has a lot more potential than uh, anything off the shelf currently. And I, I can definitely tell you that the uh, people looking into it. I had some discussions with um, with a three letter agency a while back about trying to uh, you know kind of clandestinely map a, a space uh, for later use, let's say. So they're definitely looking at ways to take wearables into sensitive uh, places and miniaturize them and 
create a 3D model from them and, and all of that. And like I, I don't know how far they right. progressed, but yeah. yeah Which we don't do most sunglasses. You might be getting close to that. They have cameras built in. Yeah. Yeah. I think the meta glasses can only record for like a minute, but really there's, that's just a, a software firmware limitation. Like yeah. cameras are tiny and the Gaussian splatting was a good point of just, there are systems now that can take arbitrary camera data and, um, I mean, even even like call map uh, okay, or gas and like all of these systems can give great intelligence from any sort of camera system. Yeah, you can rob banks big time. But you certainly plan the heist, you know. Yeah. I don't know about doing the actual robbing, but, you know, planning your escape potentially. And uh, uh, in that point, so tell a drone how to yeah. do it. Guess what part of this? Full on Ocean's Eleven. Uh, Leo, are you still there? Are you do you, do you remember uh, Brandon Blade? Brandon Blade? Yeah, he was a detailer for a long time, and then he was a structural engineer for Conco. Mm. He worked, no? Oh, okay, well, I had lunch with him today. So uh, I thought maybe you'd remember him. He remembers you. He said hi. But everybody remembers Leo. It sounds like I like a lab yeah. or something. He's a, he's a good dude. He, uh, he's one of those ones that pissed me off because he was like, he's one of those detailers that never made a mistake on the drawings uh, that I saw. And uh, then he just like moved over to structural engineering and stopped detailing. And then I was stuck with the rest of them. Oh, he, he was the guy you said is the the your go to person in terms of CAD. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't remember. The blues. So, anyways, sorry I diverged from what we were talking about. I just wanted to. I guess I could have been a phone call later. So, did you guys see you were talking about wearables? And Go just came out with a wearable for the Arc, the BLK Arc. Uh, I saw the that. Uh, the backpack with a like a pole yeah. on the back of it. Yeah, I saw that. So, when I uh, when we were there at Geo Week, there's a company called Gexel. And I noticed that they had the same exact backpack as Scan and Go. Turns out that backpack is a Italian company, which makes sense. Both of those companies are Italian. And you can just order them. But now like that Scan and Go uh, looks just like the Gexel. Everybody's starting to move towards that kind of unit, I think. Do you know any accessory for the BLK to go uh, from Scan and Go? Yeah, they have the one. Uh, so they sent me the one that sits like in front of you, right? Like a chair. And it's it's okay. It's not bad. It takes takes it out of your hands, so you don't get your arms tired. But uh, I was really hoping because they they sent it to me to to try out, and make a video about it or whatever. But uh, the one that I was hoping they were sending me was the predator looking one that sat up on your shoulder. Because mm -hmm. I would have made some killer videos with that, right? And then they have the pole, so you can go up high, right? Where are you going? Um, beyond that, I don't oh. know of any other accessory. Be careful. Let me see me in. Let me, uh, yeah. Who do we have to mute? Yeah. Gabe! Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I got you. Have, like, a room set up there. there we go. Much better. Yeah. So, yeah, what else is going on? Anybody play with anything new? Sorry, Gabe, I had to mute you. Oh, he, he can't hear. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute you, Gabe. And you're still muted. Shit, maybe he can't unmute. I'm not. I'm unmuted. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. I got a license for Verity. I haven't opened it yet because I'm still right. playing with Point Cab. Oh, that's interesting. What's with, interesting? I, I can't keep up with playing with all the software. To be honest, no, I guess Karina, what do you? I was going to ask you at say, What do you find it's like trying to keep up with? You know, like every three months, every six months, there's something else out there. I mean. You guys are all jokingly talking about Gaussian splat, like you know about it. I just only know about it from LinkedIn. And I'm like, they one day they collect data, and the next thing you got this beautiful BIM 3D model through Gaussian splat or NERF. I, I mean, I how do you keep up trying to you know impart basic knowledge to the next gen? It's not really like well, we 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 use Leica stuff, so it's just like we just whatever's upgraded, that's what we use. But when it comes to all the other stuff, like that's their capstone projects, so we just kind of let them learn and like use the radical constructivist mentality and philosophy to just say learn it. Like we'll kind of guide you through the process, but your job is to figure out what software is going to work, get the trial version, get whatever you can and let them learn it the way that they want, because then now they're learning what they want in their own way. Oh so, yeah. Like it's impossible as an instructor to like regurgitate all that information to them. But if we give them the chance to be able to explore it on their own, then, and, and build that into the course designs. And I, I find that it's easy to keep up because I don't have to keep up, but they do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So in other words, you found a way to adapt in the sense that the core 
TLS reality capture content is built around the fundamentals, the, the yep. basics, the lake, and then any of the emerging stuff is what they get to explore, exploit in their capstones. Yep, exactly. Yep. Yeah. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first time you heard about Gaussian splatting was at Lido's Lounge, right, yeah, Karina? Exactly. Yep. I had not heard of it before. And I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I've, I've been seeing stuff like Gaussian splat and nerf on LinkedIn posts for the last 12 to 18 months. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, there's, there's another one that I just, reposted the other day uh you know underwater photography for bridge inspection and scouring that you know is there must be splat or nerf behind it uh, but it's like okay black box cloud you know magic yeah. there we had I a always get ner i always get nervous about that stuff because everything that goes up and comes back down it's the internet of things so it must be right until it's not right yeah and then you <laughs> And then, and then you can't break it down, you know, from first principles to figure out, you know, where the problem is. Yeah. And I think uh, that we've found is it's not as accurate uh, yet. It's beautiful. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any accuracy. Is there? It's not scalable. Uh, measuring stuff in it is not not a thing yet, right? But um, but they're working towards it. I mean, it's especially, a great image. You know, the image yeah. quality is amazing. I mean, especially great. from like our, our buddy came over from the committee uh, and he's been researching a lot. And he took a video that we took for marketing. We were just flying a, an orbital around some cars and he took it and made a Gaussian splat. And it wasn't even designed like we didn't take the video with that in mind. He just did it and it worked beautifully. Oh, that's pretty, pretty fantastic. I see a lot of opportunities for it. But once it's scalable and, uh, you know, usable for measuring, you know, even small stuff, height areas, you know, general distances, I think it's limitless opportunities there. Yeah, um, not even for like just geospatial, but for like, uh, if we're really starting to move to a metaverse, right? It's going to help us take the real world into the uh, virtual really easily. Not that I'm encouraging that. But. but no, it is very beautiful. And all right, it's also interesting because it's trying to do a couple things um, at once where poor Gaussian splatting is using structure for motion to get a basic point cloud, and which is why it's not... Um, measurable or necessarily accurate because uh, I think that's just using I forget exactly which system it's using for it, but it's just some open source solution for that. And then Gaussian splatting, the rendering technology is a patented, not patent, is like a copy written layer on top of that. And that license currently makes it a little difficult for other people to um, iterate on top of it outside of research settings. And there's some great research iteration using Gaussian splatting, but um, I think if you could exchange that point cloud layer for something that is accurate, then you would have much more uh, confidence getting measurements out of it. But I was wondering uh, if y'all could talk a bit more about what this group is, is and what y'all do and just talk about. I only just saw an invite from Gabe, so I'm a little... Yeah. So you know, this... This group started as, and still at the root of it, is supposed to be a uh, open source free customer support line, right? So uh, the idea being a couple of industry professionals or people who know stuff about stuff are on just BSN or doing work or whatever. And then people who are having problems can show up, ask their questions, get answers. What it's kind of turned into is a bi-weekly chat about the industry from industry professionals and educators. It's just, you know, a place for people who are kind of spread out by distance to talk about the things they love, really. It's, it's become quite a few different things, really. Yeah, uh, it's another thing. It's, it's not necessarily painted into one thing. Um, there are times when, like Max said, uh, we'll all be in here. We're all pretty well acquainted. Like the, there's a kind of a core group of us. And if one of us is having an issue... Or, uh, you know, uh, it's a good place to bounce ideas off of other people, um, uh, how to solve certain things. Um, and and like you said, just kind of a general chat about what industry. And we have, some of us work in different industries as well. Um, actually, I think it started uh, Mac and I and a couple of our other friends would uh, find ourselves at the bar, uh, bar. after work uh, talking about LIDAR and uh, going through workflows in construction. And uh, it evolved, you know, 
I think that was kind of the a genesis of uh, what, what this has now become as far yeah. as. Uh, it got really you know. hard to find a bar that had plugins so we could run our computers. And you know, also we were getting a bunch of weird looks. So we, we moved it to online. You might actually find a lot of benefit in coming to the committee meetings too. And that's where we're doing a lot of the testing. Karina's part of it too. Uh, so is Gabe. Uh, testing education. We go to Geo Week and test sensors. Uh, and there's a lot of industry professionals involved in that, as well as the guys from Rapid and OSU. So we'll send you an invite to that too. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it, another thing, it's a great place to network. Uh, you know, a so lot of uh, good networking has come from this as well. Yeah, it's been great to meet all of y'all. I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Did you get my emails that I sent you? I yeah, did. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you'll hear <laughs> from me soon. Awesome. Oh, um, Sean. Yeah, I'm going to show you a project that uh, Karina's students did, and it's pretty awesome. You may have seen it online. A couple of her students did this. They did a, a children's book based on uh, laser scanning. Okay, that's brilliant. Yeah, and I have not seen this. I have not seen that. And the, the reason why I say that is a couple of years ago, uh, you know, within the Sages space, you know, the one the ongoing themes is the invisible profession of geomatics and surveying and how it's unknown on one hand. The other thing is, is, you know, like why do people know more about being lawyers and engineers and don't know about surveying? Um, and through Canada's not maybe there yet with the professional survey, what is it PCS or CBEPS or anything like that? But certainly NSPS in the U.S. took this on about four or five years ago. And what they recognized is that, you know, product placement, for better or for worse, is a problem. That, you know, you don't see any kids' books with surveying total stations or tripods in it. And so about eight years ago or six years ago, NSPS engaged with publishers of children's books. You know, everybody knows a dump truck. Everybody knows a fire truck. Everybody knows police uh, and all of that stuff, nurses, doctors, you know, like they're all there in the kids books, but there weren't any representation of just surveying. And I kind of jokingly say it, I'm not a surveyor or land surveyor at all, but it's sort of like if the whole world could figure out that everything starts with land surveying and geomatica first, you know, civil engineering, legal title, mortgage documents, like why they don't know well something's wrong there but the way nsps dealt with it is they started slowly getting content into kids books in the u.s space you know like total station or precision rod or very similar to you know get kids into surveying you know elaine balls team out of the uk or karen karen jove is it in australia that runs the she maps program yeah so you know Trina seeing that you know kids book you know that's the way you get it in front of them early on. Yeah. That was just a class project that they did. Yeah. And they, <laughs> they, they took it to it. another I, level. They killed it. I love it. They were, I had to get a lot of, like, get a lot of pieces of paper signed by them so that I could start sharing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, sure. yeah, no, that's brilliant. But, you know, quite frankly, Karina, that to me would be a really good paper at the Sages Conference next week or next year. <laughs> next week I won't make it. <laughs> uh, not next week, next year, next year. Yeah. You know, like, and, you know, like, quite frankly, what I'm hoping to do is trying to get, you know, this is just me dreaming big, mm -hmm. uh, you know, trying to get enough corporate sponsorship across Canada to bring more students, like not just the institutes having to fund the students, but mm -hmm. in the hydrographic association space of us hydro and Canadian hydro, the, the, the conference organizers themselves have started building up a war chest to try and sponsor 20 students that the students apply to the conference org committee two months out to come. So it's it's not on a researcher or an institute's shoulders, you know, but, you know, but that to me, you know, students presenting their stories around, you know, kids book point clouds, you know, to me, that's, 
Yeah. That's the way you change the pale, stale, and male factor within survey. Did, are you coming to the GoGee Maddox Expo in Calgary in October? I'm not going to be able to because we're going through massive accreditation overhaul next fall. So mm. we've been put on warning notice, and it's obvious that we're going to be working double time through the fall semester mm. just to try and make that January deliverable. So I won't be able to go, but I'm in connection. I'm in contact with John Murphy yeah, uh, okay. in terms of trying to, you know, use the GoGee Maddox platform in partnership with the june sages conference because they mm. over, we shouldn't be we're not com trying to compete no. we overlap yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so i was thinking that might be a really good place to try to aim that whole idea of like hey industry can you pay for students to go to this because it would be really good for them that's one of the goals of the committee not to keep on bringing it back up to the committee but uh is offering a certification program that would pay for students in these in these programs to go to shows with us and run these tests with us and industry meet industry professionals and get a head start on their career because i think there is uh a big benefit to being around a ton of industry professionals i mean i said i said that but that was common sense and i probably shouldn't have said it out loud well no i know mac I, I i actually no the more people that say that i mean you know jack i agree with your pointed question of asking what's the purpose of this space you know this space to me, those people that have been doing point clouds for years eventually find themselves or find each other. And so I, you know, I think, you know, to hear, you know, Max say, you know, this is just networking and brainstorming. You never know, you know, there could be different connections there. Like who would thought that, you know, multi-beam sonar overlaps, you know, the sonar hydrography was doing stuff like this 30 years ago before even LIDAR and you know, like it's weird to have lived in both worlds and see how one world evolved, you know, hydro have been doing stuff one way for a while that LIDAR only just started doing about five years ago, but vice versa, you know, like it's kind of weird to have, you know, and you never know where those are going to come up. But, you know, even here saying, you know, through this room, you know, one degree of separation, we all have industry contacts, you know, and at some point, instead of just the idea of, oh, I got this idea, a war chest so students can come, maybe the committee needs to actually put that account together, you know, because if the committee is a known entity that the industry trusts or whatever it is, maybe the committee could be, you know, that sort of node that, you know, creates operate because, you know, the Sages group can't take it on yet. They're not mature enough in order to have the infrastructure non-for-profit or you know another group i'm involved with in the marine it's called comran canadian ocean mapping research you know somebody at some point has to take the ideas and operationalize it and sometimes the more nimble groups have that ability to do it better than the existing program yeah for sure well, eric where 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 do i think i've crossed paths with you before <laughs> any one of a number of places so i i used to be at uh at autodesk i was uh with leica for a number of years so yeah uh, it could have been any any number of places conferences etc so um, like a like a usa like a like hexagon geosystems in 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 the u.s yeah. or in canada well, so uh i was i was part of the the global uh, part of the business unit. I wasn't on the sales side, but I was going to to conferences, you know, and things around the U.S. and and even the world. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I was based out of uh, out of California here. So through the connections, and I, you know, Karina, I'm going to be asking you too to tickle your contacts too. But obviously, you know, for out in the future for, you know, the sages, you know, I'm not trying to peddle that. I'm just saying it's the big mm -hmm. thing I'm working towards a year from now. Ultimately, you know, I would love to see, you know, like a head office represented there, you know, you know, not just the local reseller, but, you know, there's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, enough schools from across North America that I think it's an opportunity, you know, for, you know, the big equipment companies to have a presence there, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you can imagine education, and particularly in Canada, it is a real challenge in terms of, you know, those software costs under the new business mm -hmm. models and the year over year subscription based, you know, I'm not saying there's an answer to it, but it's a topic that over time needs to actually be discussed because programs are shutting down or aren't able to offer emerging space as it gets more and more 
onerous in the sense that you can't keep on adding that to the student fees. No, mm-hmm. I Did don't you? know you're feeling that one as well, Karina. Mm-hmm. Did you yeah. talk to Anthony Petruzzo while you were at the show the other week? Briefly, but more so it's like you have to be careful. You know, it's not everybody, can, you know, you, you got to talk to the people in order to get them to talk to the right people to then hear back from the right person. You know what I mean? So Petruzzo mm-hmm. would be the right person. He would this a good topic. One. Oh, sorry, Mac. Go ahead. Yeah. So I guess what I what I'm hearing you say is you would like some help with outreach uh, for some of these manufacturers. Yes. Yes. I think we can help with that for sure. Uh, let's like send some emails around. But yeah, I think between a lot of us, we have some connections with some different manufacturers that we can help out with. If that's what you want. For sure. Yeah. No. I mean. It, this is not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to blow the lid off of what Sages has been for the last eight years. You know, Sages, you know, there's about 40 members that have, are all professors and teachers, predominantly land surveying with 30% of them moving into Geomatica and Point Cloud. But, it, you know, there is, there is a perception that Sages is about pedagogy and education, and it's not. It's actually a forum to bring surveying and geomatics teacher, you know, industry types together, even government, you know, it can be whatever it wants to be. And what I want, you know, I've been watching the landscape now, what I'm trying to do, uh, and these are sort of three big themes that I've had for a couple of years now is, you know, trying to, you know, meet the next generation of instructors and or teachers that actually want to collaborate in content development, like in MOOC or open learning, you know, like with this digital age, you know, I don't think we're it's sort of like, well, they're going to choose Nate, SAIT, UBC, Calgary, you know, they're going to go where the opportunities are, you know, uh, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, there may have been an era where Penn State was known for this. And if you wanted to do geodesy, you went there, you know, it's, it's now getting blended and there's, you know, I'm looking I'm looking to try and meet people, you know, like Ivan or others, you know, the rapid facility, Graham Christie, you know, people that want to collaborate on course content, you know, so that, you know, many hands make light work. That's one theme. The second theme is, you know, if we've got 50 education institutes in this reality capture space in the same room, you know, I think it's a burden to manufacturers to deal with those clients as one-offs you know, like 35 one-offs, you know, each, you know, whether it's Leica or whether it's Trimble or whether it's Topcon, you know, they have to have a dedicated sales rep just to deal with the education contracts. I'm sort of like, well, wait a second, if Sages could get itself organized to the point where, you know, it's Sages engaging with all of the manufacturers on behalf of the membership, you know, maybe, maybe there's opportunities to, Because in the U.S., what I'm seeing, you know, it's not uncommon in the U.S., like Oregon State University has the partnership with David Evans and Associates and Leica that brings in, you know, $2 million of new kit and software every three years. In Canada, we can't do that, (laughs) you know, or we haven't been able to do that because the Canadian Leica office is a, you know, subsidiary to Leica USA, you know, there it's more of a business with a reseller, you know, and so it's getting the right exact, you know, everything stops, everything changes at the 49th parallel in this space. And it's, it's a different landscape North of 49. That OSU deal was actually the brainchild of a coworker of mine or an old coworker of mine, Rob. Yeah. He he worked on that deal for a year before they finally finalized everything, but it is a good program for OSU. Gabe, what were you getting ready to say a second ago? That this topic, uh, as far as uh, paying for software for educators, has come up a lot. I mean, this topic we've just beat over the head in this meeting, in in these meetings, several times. Um, Yeah. And, you know, and it seems like it's so obvious that the advantages that the, the manufacturers would have by uh, sending students out into the world, knowing the software, um, you know, to uh, champion uh, maybe laser scanning or whatever, whatever particular software it is, uh, just to champion it uh, for the places that they were going to work um, would be a huge benefit to them. And I don't understand why 
it's uh, <laughs> not easy, you know, with Autodesk and stuff like that. You could get a student, you can get a student license, you know, for, for when you're in school. I, I don't know why the, uh, the point cloud uh, softwares aren't doing the same thing. Yeah, uh, like uh, I, I won't go into it, but um, that's a very tough sell internally at, at like uh, Autodesk was amazing with all of that. And yeah, you know, would just give everything away to wind hearts and minds. And, you know, the more people using it, the better. But but like uh, is, oh, but we're not profiting off of this. So why? It's, it's, it's certainly it's, it's long game thinking. thinking. You have yeah. to think, yeah, I know. About, I know. you know, two years from now, not, you know, six months or a month from now, you know. Uh, anyways, That's exactly uh, why I used to teach at the apprenticeship and Gabe went there with me. I, I still was like, do. Yeah. I was like, when, when these kids become superintendents, uh, they're going to know how to use one instrument. It's going to be a Leica. And when they're in that, when they get asked to make a purchase, it's going to be the instrument they know, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess I do. I do that as well, but I do it for a different reason. Again, I can tell the 20% of the students that are into it or that get it and are potential, you know, hires for me down the road when they get out of the apprentice program. Yeah. You know, James, you can, you ATM's hired out of that class. Yeah. So, uh, but it, and it, I know it's a long-term investment. It's, you know, it's a minimal investment at the front, but the long, long-term, you know, it could be huge. So, yeah. Well, I, 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 I think to your point, if it's been talked about a lot and it's been talked about, I've heard it being talked about many different people. I think it hasn't been talked through an organized collective voice with, yep. with um, credibility and or momentum behind it. It's always individual voices like, you know, like, the, and that's what I mean. A group like this through our, our contacts and connections, you know, you got to keep on throwing the ball up in the air and then eventually it maybe gets momentum and or sticks or, or something changes. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm the one with the ideas. I don't know how at times to <laughs> mon mon or what is it, you know, monetize, operationalize. monetize or operationalize and in, in sailing, they call it, what is it, you know, tacking over top and, you know, taking the lead, but you know, I'm not surprised to hear you say it's been talked about forever but we haven't found a way to do anything about it or change the status quo but i think talking about it is a good first step you know eventually a squeaky wheel will get grease it's just how much grease it'll get you know i feel like like has kind of gone the opposite direction like i used to cover uh there used to be educational prices and that like it used to cover <laughs> half of it and now it uh the dealers still offer it but they cover the entire cost of it now so uh you know the discounts that educators get comes right out of the dealer's pocket which is not your guys' yeah. problem uh, you know uh, and that's another thing i know leica yeah. has moved moving away from uh having vendors uh for their product because allegedly because of uh poor product support is, is what they had told me so um i don't know how that plays into all this but um if, if vendors aren't giving good support then uh, Leica would be beholden to uh, train those people. So anyway, it just seems so <laughs> pragmatical to to offer, you know, students <laughs> software. Yeah. If only I knew what was going on in Eric's head right now. I can imagine there's many stories having been on all sides of the fence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Long enough, he's seen the iterations where they tried that before, right? I can now. tell you that uh, Eric's a great storyteller. He is uh, very good at uh, <laughs> watching what he says in here. Uh, but uh so we went and had uh, tacos a, a couple weeks ago, and man, he has got some good stories and and a lot of them. So, um, well, well, let's hey. let's just put it this way: uh, painted on the wall in Norcross at the U.S. headquarters, corporate value number one. We are a profit-driven company. I, I think that sums up a lot of it. Is that, <laughs> that must be? Is that the same office where the Armadillo Testing Center is? Oh, so it's it's not in the same building, but that's nearby. Yeah. The armadillo is pretty sweet, I will say. Yeah. And uh, I, I worked with with the guy who designed that and stuff back in the day. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, well, folks, I'm going to have to leave because I got two young kids coming home. Uh, thank you for the invite. You know, you know, it's free flowing. Uh, Karina, we'll all be in touch. When, whenever you get a chance. No, no yeah. stress. Yeah, yeah. And, you'll you'll uh, need to take Jack, vacation here soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jack, it was nice meeting you. I, I don't know G. Kettler. I don't know your first name, Mr. Gabriel. Kettler. Gabriel? Okay. Yeah. So, and, uh, uh, nice to meet you. 
Yeah. Uh, Mac and I are business partners and I work for Turner Construction. So um, yeah. as well. And uh, Dave has been here. Nice to meet you. Well, I don't know what happened for Mac and I, but at OSU, we kind of stayed up two nights till like two in the morning. We just couldn't stop talking LIDAR and point yeah. clouds and everything, you know. And and so, Matt, uh, Jack, that's what this place is about. Th those people, it's sort of like a drug. It's an addiction. Once you once you get into point clouds, you can't leave them. Yeah. You start out point cloud curious and you end up point cloud addicted or a lidaholic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting okay. sucked in for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice to meet you. I'm going to jump to you guys. Yeah, uh, right. On. Good seeing you. Yeah. yeah, we might as well call it. Right. Eric, you can still tell the like of people that you do know that I'm still going to be coming at them. <laughs> I'm going to keep on asking and asking. And I'm Irish. You know, the Englishmen say the one thing about Irish, make sure when you knock them down, you kill them. Because otherwise, Irishmen just keep on popping back up over <laughs> and over and over and over again. Noted. Okay. Right. See you guys. Peace. Hey, Jack, yeah. thanks for coming, man. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Come on back yeah, anytime. You all. All right. Yeah. I'll follow up soon. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. All right. hey, Eric, were you were you talking to yeah. me when you said uh you wanted to follow up with sales? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, we, know we can we can yeah, chat we at some point. Gabe yeah, yeah. just suggested I should uh I should uh talk to you a little bit. So yeah, we can figure something out. I mean we don't have a spot for a permanent permanent right now, but definitely Fine like now. Yeah, we we'll definitely pay commission, right? No, and, and I'm, you know, just kind of curious, even just kind of making that that transition, even even hypothetically, you know, just yeah. like you said, kind of exploring possibility. Yeah, and we do actually have some other uh, rather large uh, pokers in the fire right now, and if they turn out, we'll definitely be uh, needing people. So uh, definitely something we should touch on yeah yeah for sure like i said i'm i'm open to just chatting in general too it's yeah. not even a uh you know hey do something for me it's just uh no, let me you. pick your brain a little bit you know no you're good peoples and we always try to look out for good people so all right guys yeah i'm gonna call it all right sounds good cool. thanks so much mac see you, everybody. Nice you jack yeah nice meeting you see y'all later okay. bye